This podcast is a Sepulveda Sanchez Law production. What comes after death? On this episode of Beyond the Bar, I invite Ruben Sanchez, superintendent of the Stockton Rural Cemetery. Ruben Sanchez has worked in the cemetery business for over 25 years and has a unique perspective on the subject of death, avoiding conflict after death, and what his customers are seeking when it comes to finding a lawyer to represent them in wrongful death matters. I'm Gabriel Sepulveda Sanchez, CEO and founder of Sepulveda Sanchez Law, an award-winning catastrophic injury plaintiff's law firm. Sepulveda Sanchez Law has earned a spot on the Inc. 5000 list as one of the fastest growing law firms in the nation. In each episode of the podcast, I selectively choose market leaders, entrepreneurs, and self-development experts to share their insights on how to become a better lawyer, business owner, and person. This is Beyond the Bar. Enjoy the show. Well, uh, thank you, Dad, for coming on the show. Oh, yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. So, um, no, I, I, I wanted to bring you on the show because looking back on my life experience and where I, who I am today, mm-hmm. I have to attribute a lot to you. Oh, okay? thank you. And um, thank you. I have kind of. We were talking about. We, we wanted to stop it to be about wrongful death. Yeah. And I was thinking. Who else can I get on right now about the non-lawyer to talk about like this about death in general? Mm. And I was like, light bulb went off my father. Mm. And it's because I remember growing up, coming after high school, mm-hmm. um, you picking me up from school and taking me and studying. And I remember it was the quietest place to study. There's no, <laughs> there was I was in your office, just working away, studying, and I remember just just quiet and peaceful. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, right. And a light bulb went off. I said, I told my social media guy, hey, we got to get my dad on. Mm. And dad's, he's, he's, we, I, yeah, I grew yeah. up in the cemetery pretty much. I yeah, grew right. up there. Right, right. So that's why we, we have you on. And I appreciate you coming on as a guest. And what I want to do is I want to give some value to our audience. And I want to um, kind of get some perspective on what happens after someone dies as far as the, the processes mm. or the procedures that families go through on a daily right. basis. Mm-hmm. Um. So what I want to ask for right now is what, when someone passes away, what is the standard thing that happens? And that when I mean standard, I mean, is they first, they, do they transfer the, they have the, the body transferred to the funeral home and then it comes to you. How does it work from the day someone dies and they know their the family has to prepare a burial? Hmm. What happens? Do they, do they go to the cemetery directly? Do they go to the, the morgue? Can you explain to me just a little bit how, what do you know about that? Yeah. So, uh, well, number one, it's a pleasure being on your, on your show, your podcast here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it's a, it's a, a good place. Good place. Got a good spot here. I really Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate strength it. you got. Thank you, Dad. But to answer your question, um, you know, uh, I've been doing this for about 25 years now and everything's a little different, but what I do know consistently is when somebody passes away, either at a hospital or at home, uh, usually the coroners are involved, the sheriffs or, or the PD of mm-hmm. the city. And what they do is they'll, they'll get the body, they'll contact next to kin, and they'll transport the body to the coroners. Or if they have things prearranged already with their funeral home, which some families do, they'll go to the funeral home of their choice. Okay. So there's two places, coroners and funeral homes. Okay. And then from there, then they decide if they have a policy with a cemetery or a crematory. Okay. So... Someone passes away, they either go to the funeral home or they go to the coroner's office. Right. So sometimes they can go directly to the coroner, the coroner, uh, the, the funeral home directly. Correct. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So at, okay, let's just say they go to the coroner's. Now, what happens from what happens at the coroner's office? So coroner's uh, at, at that point, there's a uh, there's some uh, family members that will contact the coroner's because they'll know about it. Uh, officials like Stockton PD uh, that we have in Stockton mm-hmm. or fire department they would contact the families the next to kin and they would say, Hey, where, where does this body going? Uh, it's kind of like a, a moving pieces, you know, and they want to know answers like, okay, who's the responsible party. Do they have a cemetery plot? Are they being cremated or is there somebody that's going to speak for them or okay. if not, or this is abandoned. Okay. There's always four things that come up. Okay. So coroner's office. Um, Primary. now from there, they're going to go, they're not going direct. They're not going to the cemetery yet. They're going right. to the funeral home. Is that correct? Uh, well, sometimes there's funeral homes slash cemeteries. Okay. So they can be two in one, like a, kind of like a Walmart, you know, one-stop shop where okay. they got headstones, 
flowers and the whole works, the casket and all that. Okay. So when they say, like, you know, when I've just watched some of the shows I watch and everything, as far as embalming goes, I probably shouldn't know more since you, I, Mm-mm. you, my, my father's in this business. I don't, yeah, yeah. But I don't know because I never asked you, but, um, the ball embalming, mm-hmm. where's that? That takes place at the funeral, the funeral home. Yes. Yeah. Well, it could be at the coroners too, if they're okay. equipped with the, the special tools Embalming comes in place where pretty much, you know, the, the body will go into a decay after 72 hours. Okay. So the family, if they're proactive, they will say, you know what? He has a policy or she has a policy. I want them embalmed. So in other words, there's already pieces together. Okay. Okay. So embalming will kind of stop the decay of the body and keep it kind of like frozen, you know? Mm-hmm. So what, what is, what is, what's embalming? What's that? Uh, embalming is a, a, Pretty much like you just uh, draining out the fluids okay. of the body because okay. we're all of flesh. So we need refrigeration after we pass at mm-hmm. least within 72 hours. So yeah, if you don't do the embalming, then the body, so it's flesh, you'll start just like, you know, okay. get a good smell to it. Yeah. Bad smell to it. Actually. Oh man. Okay. So, so once the body's embalmed and so we're at the funeral home, let's just say we're at the funeral mm-hmm. home, the coroner doesn't do the embalming, the funeral home does it. It's embalmed mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Now, is that when they come to you or when is, what happens after that process? Yeah. So uh, once they go to that, that feeder home, um, like I said, first thing that usually your Stockton PD that I deal with, they'll give me a call, a coroner sheriff mm-hmm. will give me a call and they'll say, Hey, I have this case of John Doe. Does this person have a property there? And I will look up John Doe's name in our system and see if they did. And I go, Hey, yeah, he does have a property here. Mm-hmm. I go, thank you so much. And then they will bring the body to us on Number one, that the family approves it. Okay. So there's some steps. You know, everybody's every county's different. So we represent San Joaquin County. So there is some difference on other counties, but consistently they would go to a, a funeral home of their choice. The funeral home will say, "Hey, call the cemetery that you think you have property and look it up," and then they do the burial. At so our place. you mean property? So someone's involved, and the family members will call. They want to see if the when you say property, like the, the, the burial plot's been yep. purchased already. Correct. Okay. So that's when you mean they'll see where well, this person died. Did he already purchase a burial plot? Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How many people actually purchased their, their burial plot before they pass? So this, you know, about, I would say about 24% of so the population. So most people, most people don't then. Uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most people don't. Okay. That's interesting. So do you see, let me ask you this. What, what type of people, that's interesting. So what type of people will usually purchase their bulk plot before... Passing, they, they pass. Is it? Is it typically? What do you? What's your? What's been your experience with that? You know, those people, from my experience, they're pretty much proactive. They're to detail, and they don't want to put the burden on their children mm-hmm. or their grandchildren. That's pretty much it. Mostly older adults kind of pre-plan. They know it's going to happen. It's the way of life, you know. And, and they say, you know what? I don't want to burden the finances on my children or grandchildren. Let me put this in motion, and I'll pre-purchase a plot, and everything will be pretty much taken care of financially wise. As far as the age range goes, what do you see in like the age people usually start purchasing their, their plots? You know, and- right about my age, you know, mm-hmm. 57 to 60 to 70 year old, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, it, it's different depending on culture, you know, mm-hmm. it, you knew uh, race has a lot to do with it too. Uh, I know the Asian community that I deal with, they kind of don't do pre-planning until the day it happens. Okay. You know, uh, other people, you know, uh, they'll probably pre-plan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. When you say race, I, I, you know, race matters. What do you, what typically, what race do you see usually that's pre-planned their, their plot and, and has that intent to not burden their family? What do you see? Uh, when I deal with a, a Japanese family are uh-huh. pretty detailed. They mm-hmm. have everything planned out. Uh, the Hmong community, mm-hmm. uh, Vietnamese community, uh, Chinese community. That's interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they buy their, per- so let me ask you this. How much typically if someone wanted to buy a burial plot, how much, how much does that usually cost? And just say, it doesn't have to be the, the, the prime real estate on the cemetery, right. but on average, what does that cost the family? Yeah, so in our area, we're at San Joaquin County, so on average, say $3,000 for the land. Mm-hmm. And then on the top of that, there's the digging, the process of that, the digging, the concrete box, uh, the canopies and chairs, mm-hmm. state fees, sales tax. So you're looking on our end, looking about, say, $6,000. 6000 So it's about 3000 for a plot and about 3000 for burying. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't include the the funeral home stuff, though, right? The embalming on that. Okay. Correct. What's that usually around like? The funeral, uh, home? funeral homes can really range depending on what you want. You want a church service, chapel service, or just a direct graveside service. Mm-hmm. So it can range from five thousand from a funeral home to maybe twenty thousand, depending wow. on what you want. Wow. So let me ask you this: on, on average, though, like, what do you what do you see the average? It's all in funeral. I mean, uh, the, the 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 funeral home. 
the cemetery, the burial expenses. What do you see on average all in is about 15,000 at 15, this point in time. 15, so it costs, so when someone passes away, it's going to cost the fan. It's either going to cost the family or you're going to prepare about 15,000 then pretty much. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you said that only 24% of people yeah. do do this. Yeah. Now the other people, are they, do you see that they're surprised when they come to you? They're like, how much does it cost? They're, they're, what do you, what's the kind of. Yeah. You know, like I say, it's, uh, I've been in this death industry a, a while and, you know, some people just don't want to talk about it. You know, you're, you think we're going to live forever and we're not, you yeah. know, 25 year old, 35 year olds, 40 year olds. They're like, you know what? I ain't even worried about it. You know, yeah. put, put, put my body in a, in a river, you know, or, yeah. or, or cremate me and put me in a, in a casino. I see a lot of that, you know, so, yeah. but really when it comes down to it, when it does happen, uh, you should have some money set aside uh, for a proper burial. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, as far as cremation goes, does that change the game as far as the expenses and, and, and burying? Is that going to be a lot? I'm assuming it's a lot cheaper because you don't have a bigger plot. Yeah. 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 Cremation actually grown in, in California yeah. about like, we're at about 60% now. Okay. Where families are saying, you know what? The, the younger generation is mostly going to cremation. Okay. Because uh, actually there's extra money. Like you said, point, it is more expensive. Cremation can be less half the cost. Oh, Instead wow. of 15000 you might look at 7000 Wow. For, for picking up the body, taking it to the morgue, uh, having it cremated at a crematory, uh, buying a small plot, or put mm -hmm. the ashes in an urn and putting it on your on your mantle. Yeah, you know, so everything would be like between five to six thousand dollars. So you're cutting costs on the the cemetery expenses, the funeral home. People like to have their celebration of life kind of thing. Yeah, but you're cutting costs on this. this yeah, yeah. Okay. You you can always there's a lot of ways to cut costs for cremation. Yeah. You can have celebration life at home or like a little your church or or mm -hmm. a little hall. Yeah, uh, a community hall, and then you're, you're, yeah, yeah, you're set interesting, down. interesting. Mm -hmm. So, what I want to ask is this: is you see death from all different parts, and mm -hmm. it's that's just part of the reason I brought you on. I was like, yeah. and my dad's like, if anyone's, yeah, we're lawyers, but if anyone knows death and, and the process of it, it's gonna be my father. Um, and what I wanted to ask is, you see death from, you see it from natural causes, you see things from illnesses. Mm -hmm. You see things from uh, criminal acts, murders. Yeah, You've yeah. seen things from accidents. Yeah. Um, what are the most common, like if you had to put a percentage on like the deaths you see resulting from accidents or criminal acts, what would you, what would you place that on? We can yeah. put a rough estimate on like that. Well, pretty much uh, California in a whole uh, automobile accidents. Automobile unfortunately, accidents. yeah. Okay. Drunk driving. Drunk much. driving. You see yeah. a lot of drunk driving. Okay. Yeah. What about percentage? Like if you had to put like of all the, all the, the near years of experience, you know, 20% mm. car, uh, uh, death, death resulting from uh, negligence accidents or, you know, 50%. What would you kind of, is that hard? You know, what'd you think? You know, I, for, in my place, you mm. know, not much, maybe, yeah. maybe a 5%, yeah. you know, it, we have those like every other few months, you know, especially mm. in the winter months, okay. people are drinking and celebrating and then summer months are pretty heavy. Okay. Summer and winters, we see a lot yeah, of Yeah, summer and, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, one thing too is we, we, I want to ask is people come in to you and they, they want to talk about buying the plot or if mm -hmm. it hasn't been, if it hasn't been bought, bought they want to talk to you about buying yeah. it. Um, well, how's the, how do they approach you? The, the family members approach you differently compared as opposed to when someone dies of natural causes, someone's 95 years old and their, their father passed away or yeah. their grandfather or grandmother, whatever it is. Yeah. And someone that's 25, that's gotten uh, uh it's been killed because of someone's negligence yeah when they come and talk to you as a uh, as a uh, operations manager of a cemetery mm -hmm. how does what's the behavior like as opposed to the the family members that lost someone because of natural causes yeah. of old age yeah. right as opposed to like as something tragic do they respond differently to you how what do you what have you noticed as far as how people act with you and work. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, like I said, with natural causes, you know, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. They're, there's a, put them up this way. Like we know what's going to happen. Yeah. So we have time to put everything in place. And, but as for the natural causes or, uh, or auto accident or some yeah. kind or motorcycle accident, it's shocking. It's shocking. There's, there's like, what do we do now? Never been here. First time my son or daughter is very young mm -hmm. and something happens. Uh, on those, it's, it's really tough. They just will call me and trust in me. Mm -hmm. Price doesn't really come up. It's just where they feel where they can go visit the loved one for for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So that when you come in, when you see 
when they when you see the when you see them come into the office are they more like are they are they more emotional than the other people that that lost someone at an older age or oh yeah definitely yeah somebody younger yeah definitely it's it's shocking it's hard my heart goes out to them yeah. you know i get emotionally engaged with them and yeah, like, yeah it's very hard because it, it sucks it really sucks yeah it really sucks that's yeah. interesting okay yeah um so when Someone that passes away from a result of a, you know, I'm a wrongful death lawyer. And mm -hmm. when I've had these different types of cases, I've had people die at older ages, people die at younger ages. Yeah. Um, when someone dies as a result of someone else's negligence and they come to you and mm -hmm. the, eventually they're burying their loved one, do they ask you for, can you refer me to a lawyer? Do they ever ask, like, when do you... Mm -hmm. Do they seem lost? Do they, they express to you that I need help? Can you direct me to someone? Mm -hmm. Direct me to someone? Uh, can you, what do they, do they ever ask you for like guidance in certain areas? Um, like what, what, how would you, how would you see your experiences? Yeah. That? Yeah. So yeah. So, okay. Well, on a couple of situations, they would, they would entrust in me. Yeah. And when I help a family, I give them a hundred percent of myself and yeah. there's no, there's no, um, like they say, uh, I'm committed to them and I, I can feel their pain. And and then what I ask them to do, do you need any financial assistance? Mm -hmm. You know, is there something I can, in other words, ask me a question, I'll try to get an answer for you. Yeah. And then some will say, you know what? Uh, I think I can get, you know, I'm not, my son or daughter was not at fault. And how can I, who do I see that after, after this? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you probably need to contact a, a, an attorney uh, of your choice that you feel comfortable with that can kind of work it for you. Mm -hmm. And there's some attorneys that will say, you know what? Um, there's some law firms that will say they'll, they'll pay the burial expense, funeral expense. So they don't have to f focus on anything else, but just the mourning and the planning. Mm -hmm. And they'll trust a, a law firm to say, you know what? Take care of everything else that needs to be taken care of. And that's what I see a couple of times, you know, throughout my years there, mm -hmm. there's people asking, cause you're, they're shocking. This, if, especially an accident, you know, the, the, there'd be an investigation, you know, uh, yeah. go to the coroners and then you're pretty much on your own after that. Yeah. All they're going to, all the police department or fire department or coroners are going to say, Hey, you need to get your affairs in order, yeah. you know, and then families, last thing they're thinking about is kind of like, you know, price, you yeah. know, they just want, they just want proaction, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now the interesting part about your job is you're dealing with people that you that have mm -hmm. like, they're just coming to you in the worst times of their life yeah, sometimes, right, you know, right. and, and no one wants to have a tragic, a tragic accident like that. Yeah. Um, and I think you're a good person to talk to about as far as how to deal with people like that. And, and, and because in my experience as a, a wrongful death lawyer, I, I, it's, it's, it's very tough. Sometimes you, mm -hmm. you, you want to be sensitive to their needs and, and, yeah. and um, it, what I do, my job is to, it's, my job is to get justice for them, yes. but justice in this country means more compensation, more money for them too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to be very sensitive about that. No, no amount of money is going to bring back your loved ones. I've had clients that have talk, talked to me and, and, you know, I can get them $10 million, whatever, $2 million, whatever it is. It's not, they would rather have their loved ones back. Yeah. Absolutely. What advice would you have for attorneys just like me that would, that are taking on these cases shortly after someone's passed away you know what what would you would you what, what would be your advice to you how to how to deal with the emotions how do you how to approach not strategically the lawyering part but mm -hmm. the counseling part because pretty much what you do is you're, you're counseling a lot yeah absolutely how would you how would you what kind of advice would you give for someone that's you know they just lost your loved one a couple of weeks ago and they're coming to you for advice. How would you deal with that as far as the emotions and the shock that they're dealing with? Um, so you're saying what they should look for an attorney? Well, yeah, what they could look for an attorney, but what, how would it, how would someone like the attorney, you know, what would you be your advice? Cause you've dealt with so many people yeah, in these yeah. situations. What would your advice be for someone to, mm. how do you, how do you respond on a human level to them? Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, I would 100% just be real with them. Yeah. You know, uh, people will know if you're just just being a phony, but just be real. And that's that's me. I'm I'm 99%. I'm real. You know, I'm not perfect. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think uh, when they have any legal advice, they would say, you know what, whoever gives you, you know, you feel comfortable with. To me, that's number one, that he or she is going to give you 100% uh, to this cause or to listen, be a good listener and also give us a little wisdom and advice, but also be there as a, as also a, a, a unity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A unity like, hey, it's unfortunate. I'm here to help you from the day you sign with me to the day that you need me. We're like kind of like family, you know. Yeah. Kind of like family like a partnership, like a Part family. Yeah, uh, more more like a community. Yeah, you know, because if I treat them right, they always refer other good people mm -hmm. to me, which happens a lot. Because I'm going to be 100% well. Though I'm not here yeah. for the the money. I'm here for to make. It's a calling on my end to make sure you get the best service from me, and that's what I pride myself on. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. interesting. That's that's good. That's good stuff right there. So now you you mentioned as far as um, you know. Sometimes these families, they, they come to you if someone tragically has died uh, uh, in, a, in an accident and you ask them, do you need financial assistance? Is there, what's your experience with that? Is there certain companies or is there certain uh, government agencies that will help them with their, their funeral expenses if they can't afford it? Mm. You know, 15 grand is a lot of money for most yeah. people in the United mm -hmm. States. Now, if someone can't afford that, is there somewhere where we can direct them? Agencies, DA's offices or anything like that? that yeah, I can speak for my county, San Joaquin County, mm -hmm. and uh, usually uh, our county they go. It's called uh, Victims Witness. Okay. So there's a Victims Witness program that uh, that will help them recoup some of the burial expense. But there is a cap I, at this point in time. It's like ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So which just doesn't it barely covers the burial and the funeral expense. Yeah. Anything after that, you know, they they would be on their own. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Still something though. Mm -hmm. So Victims Witnesses. So I'm assuming that's. That's not just for someone that's passed away because of, of cancer or died of old age. This is about someone that's criminal like act. A criminal act. Yeah. What about car accidents, things like that? Like, you know, uh, is it more like a DUI intentional, like something a criminal act is a DUI accident? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, on, in our, like I said, our county, uh, San Joaquin County, would give the families like a little, uh, mm -hmm. little pamphlet. Yeah. Just what law firms or funeral homes that can help them. Yeah. With the expense. Yeah. You know, they're not burdened with that. So okay. there is a list of that, uh, unless they have their own personal attorney or family friend mm -hmm. or, you know, or somebody were did business with. I understand. Okay. Okay. So another thing I want to ask is, you know, you've seen, you're saying that, man, it's, it's, it's smart to purchase your burial plot mm -hmm. so you don't have to burden your family or at least mm -hmm. discuss it with your family, you know, when mm -hmm. you think that time's coming. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen? Like, have you seen a lot of like fights amongst family over over this kind of burial plots and so that maybe they thought dad wanted to be cremated or no dad wanted to be buried in a catholic cemetery what kind of family stuff what's the most common issue you've seen mm. when someone passes away amongst family members uh mostly divorce mm -hmm. that's really big or sometimes they don't get a legal divorce and the the wife at the time, or if they're separated, legal separated, she still has, like say a, 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 the husband passed away and they're separated. Yeah. Uh, and he has a, you know, another significant other, you know, or their children want to have something to say. If they're not legally divorced, they're still legally married in California, then the the mom or the wife will still have the right for disposition of his body. Oh. we I see quite a few of that. So yeah, it's always if you're gonna get a divorce, or you always want to make sure it's finalized, because there are steps. The legal on my end for cemetery burials, mm -hmm. they always ask uh, number one, uh, do you have power of attorney to make this burial happen? Number two, are you the legally the spouse? Number three, are you a competent uh, child, or you know if you're 18 and over, and then it goes down to the parents and then grandparents. So there are steps. Interesting. So if somebody dies and there's nothing prearranged. You know, John Smith said, you know what? Just put me anywhere. Then there's steps. I need to say the wife needs to come in and sign the contract. She don't have to pay, but she would have to sign it for it to move, mm -hmm. to get it in motion. Interesting. And then there's, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you had some issues. So say, right. okay, say someone's 60 years old and they got divorced. They're in the, they, they filed for divorce and they're 59. They're kind of going through and they get mm -hmm. fell in love with some other woman or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you're saying that guy, so that guy suddenly just dies and for whatever reason it is. This new girlfriend or new, new, new lover, you've seen disputes between the oh, ex-wife. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Much, about yeah. <laughs> basically where's he getting buried, all that stuff. It's not absolutely. just about what his, his inheritance is and all that. It's about little, you've seen fights over 
the way he's going to be, if they're going to be cremated or not, all that stuff. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. Well, who has the legal right? So yeah, yeah. There was a case where a man passed away. He was still legally married. Yeah. Uh, he did have a girlfriend on the side, uh -huh. of course, and that yeah. caused that was the divorce. <laughs> so it wasn't finalized. Yeah. And I remember I had, we couldn't the girlfriend come in and try to buy a plot for him. I go, okay, so who's this for? Uh, and she would lie to me and say he's married, and I found that he wasn't legally married. So I had to mm. call the. The mm. ex-wife, but it legally wasn't finalized, and she was hesitant to come and sign for anything for the SLB, right? Mm, yeah. So it was like, <laughs> you know, and uh, it did happen. She yeah. she got a soft heart. Mm -hmm. She did it for her kids. You know, these are kids' mom or yeah. kids' dad. Yeah. So yeah, she yeah she came through, and when we needed her to come through. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So that's real common then. A lot of that. So it does happen. Like, yeah, especially okay. in California. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so. But you you said it, you think it's a smart idea to like if you're above middle age and and you think it's a smart idea to go ahead and, and just take care of all that stuff before you go. Huh? Absolutely, if you're a proactive person and you don't you just want to like check the boxes yeah. in your life, you know. For me, I'm yeah. just speaking for me. Yeah, yeah, you check the boxes. You know, kids off to college. You know, buy your your house, your dream car. Hey, cemetery plot? Yeah, why not? Yeah, check it off. It's out of the way. You can laugh about it. Yeah. Some people don't like to do it because they think it's a curse. Yeah. You know, but for me, I haven't seen a curse act like that. Yeah. So as long as you got your your ducks in a row, they call it, and you're just helping the financial burden of your children or grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you seen any like really bizarre like this guy? Someone come to you? It's like he's still alive. He's like, and I want to be right. buried on the next to this guy right here. Right. Or I'm I'm not saying like a family member next to, but have you seen right. something like? You want what's the most bizarre thing someone's come to you? <laughs> you know, obviously, we don't have to name any names, you right, know, for right, confidential right. purposes. But right, right. what's the most bizarre thing someone said? Like, I want to be married next to my my two, my mistress and my right, wife. What right. what is it that you? What else do you see? Yeah, you know, first thing that came to mind was uh, uh, well, he passed away already, but Mr. Swank. Okay. You know, he uh, like I said, I've been there twenty five years, and he was one of my first clients. Yeah. And he buried his first wife. You know, he never had any kids. Uh, he re he remarried. Uh, buried his second wife oh geez. you know yeah and then uh <laughs> and then uh one time he came by he was like in his 80s and he had another uh another lady in the car yeah. you know he, he had a good pension fund he, you know, he was he was attracted to a lot of women and apparently he uh outlived her wow. and yeah he buried uh he buried her on the bottom and he buried on top when he passed so he oh, had three wow. women with him wow what man. a way to go right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fact yeah Mr. that's Swank. crazy that's crazy yeah yeah that's, that's i thought he would yep yeah, Later on, I was like, was he killing him on purpose, poisoning him, or what? Yeah. Push him off the cliff? <laughs> but no, it was all natural causes. But uh, well, that's wild, his, name, his name fitted him, Mr. Swank. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Swank. Mr. Yeah. Swank, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool guy. That's funny. Yeah. So I know, you know, growing up, I remember this story. I just think it was really cool, you know. But um, I remember you told me, I was like, Dad, like, what is this, this craziest stuff you've seen you dealt with as an operations manager in the cemetery? Yeah. And remember you told me, and I used to think it was really cool, was like the Hell's Angels guys, you know? Yeah, and, oh yeah. And I want to ask you just for the people watching this that I think is a cool story, but tell me about yeah. what happened when the Hell's Angels guys, or the, it was like a chapter leader in San Joaquin County or something. What yeah, happened? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. So yeah. tell me, tell me what, what, what happened, man? I know you yeah. talked about ladies came in there and said, I'm going to bury, you ain't doing shit. I'm going to bury my own. I'm right. burying this guy myself. Yes. Yeah. 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 So No, I me. mean, yeah. Like I said, I probably can't say names, but yeah, that was only like three years into the job, uh, you know, and uh, I was in the job. how old were you at that time? Maybe 36. Yeah, you're my age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it happened. Uh, oh yeah. I remember that. You know, I got a phone call and this lady was just pretty much yeah. irate and said that she's going after the people who killed her husband. And, yeah. you know, that this is not happening. We bury our own. We, you know, we're going to dig it. We're going to bury him. And it's your fucking cemetery. <laughs> I was like, okay. I thought she was, you know, drunk on drugs. No yeah. worries. Oh, sure enough, she showed up, you know, and she told her who her husband was. I didn't know nothing about it until I read the papers and the news. I go, oh, wow. And she said pretty much to me, like, okay, you're we're gonna be here on Saturday. I said, okay, and we bury our own and and whatever money you need, mm -hmm. we're gonna happen. And I was like, I don't think this is gonna happen on Saturday. We don't work on Saturdays. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, okay, I was trying to be, you know, Mr. Uh to the T, you know, uh, all protocol, you know. Uh, so I showed her the plot and she goes, I want all these plots. I go, okay. I didn't know it was Hell's Angels. Give yeah. me not. I didn't know the whole story. I know yeah. it, it was pretty neat, <laughs> Man, the next day they showed up and they threw a lot of water cash. Lots wow. of wads of cash. Pretty high, like a tall, like a coffee 
can. You know? <laughs> okay, I guess she got all those plots, you know. And then when she left, yeah. some plainclothes officers showed up. Uh-huh. And then they go, uh, can I help you, sir? And he just, plain clothes, he just left his FBI bag yeah. and say, what's going on? When is the service going to happen? And I was like, wow. Uh, uh, wow, she's trying to do it on Saturday, but I told her we don't do burials on Saturday. Uh, and I was naive. I'll be honest uh, with you. I was kind of trying to be infirm with protocol. Uh, and he goes, you know what? It is going to happen on Saturday and you are going to bury her. Said, okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, so I learned a lot. You know, a lot good. of people from all over and they took over the whole town. Wow. You can see this. Uh, we buried him on a Saturday, of course. And they started having the bam, the viewing of his body yeah. like on a Friday, I want to say Thursday, Friday. And you can see cycle, just the, the noise of the of the choppers that came. Nah. Just the noise itself. Oh, they're in town. Yeah, wow. it was going to happen. So you didn't get involved. You didn't have any of this, anyone dig the grace, nothing like that. They, they just did their own thing. or They did their own thing. Wow. They made our job easier. You know, I, I, honestly, I was, I was pretty much a coward. I probably hit an office. You know? There's a lot of threats going on. People are going to shoot, yeah. bomb, pipe bombs, stuff like that. That's yeah, crazy. I was, I was in the office like, hey, I got a son to feed. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me ask, so, I mean, this, what did you learn? Like, you, what did you learn from that experience? Like, is it growing up? Like, you know, what, what was something that you learned from that? Was it, was it- from that, you know, whoever has the, the power has the leverage. Yeah. You know, and you, know, you didn't you, have any power. I didn't have any power. I thought I did, but yeah, that's it. You know, money. Uh, yeah. no, that's funny. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man. This is something I, you know, as growing up, we hear people always, I, my friends would always ask me, hey, you see your dad, see ghosts, everything. And I, I don't mm-hmm. think I've asked you that. Have you seen, like, have you seen anything at the, at the office or the, at the cemetery where you're like, that was weird? Something, mm-hmm. something didn't match up. Yeah. Tell me about that. Where you still like you kind of know working at the office, mm-hmm. like uh, there's something, something yeah. was something's weird. You know, you've been in the cemetery business how long? Twenty five years. Twenty five. So in yeah. twenty five years, what is is there anything that's happened to you that you thought, man, that that's I, I had the had the goosebumps going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, everybody thinks I'm crazy, but the truth is, I didn't never seen ghosts, yeah. but I felt. I felt a, a presence yeah. that came inside me that I didn't know what, what it was. I remember closing the gates. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. I was throwing out the garbage. It was like five o'clock, it was a windy day. And I walked uh, to the trash can and I heard my dad call my name. Wow. Like, Ruben, yeah. Ruben. I thought someone was playing with me. I honest to God, yeah. it gave me the chills. I looked around because he's been dead for a long time. Wow. And I looked around, I go, is this really happening? Wow. You know, and I, I mean, just to clear as day, honestly, to this to this day, uh, of my soul, it, it happened. Yeah. You know, and I I was a believer, and I just felt, you know, uh, at that time, like, wait, this is not happening. I thought somebody was like, like doing like a punking me or something on the show or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> that that was something. You know, uh, also one that scared me too was the uh, the little girl that came to the office. Mm-hmm. You know, with a doll. And her mom was with her. Her mom was kind of wigging out, you know. And I was ready to call the sheriff. You know, can I help you, ma'am? She goes, oh, help me, my daughter, my daughter. And I was like, oh, okay, she's a cute thing with her doll. She's brushing it. And and then I looked at the girl, and, and I was ready to call the cops. Like, yeah, she's crazy, especially with a child with her. And I, I told your mom about this. And some people, they're crazy. But the daughter had, like, a deep voice, like she was possessed. Oh, man. And she would say, like, she had – her mom was explaining that she, her daughter was having nightmares. Mm-hmm. The man on the roof, the man on the roof, the man on the roof. I, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what you're making out of this, you know? And the girl just, she couldn't, her, she couldn't really look at me. She was just brushing the doll's hair. And I said, they need to get out of here. You know, I was ready to call the sheriff. She just had bad vibes. Bad, yeah. definitely a bad vibe. <laughs> so I kind of got the name of what she was saying yeah. of the person that was buried. So make a long story short, I looked in our old records. And this is, I kid you not, I kid you not. The name that she gave me, I looked it up on old records because our cemetery goes back like 160 years. Mm-hmm. And I looked and the man hung himself. Oh, that's crazy. Back in the 1800s. Oh my God. That was the man on the roof. And her, and I looked it again, her, her mom babysat the girl in the Madison district. They call it in Stockton. Wow. Yeah. It's called like the Magnolia district. Okay. So I was like, so she was having dreams or vision or something. Cause I looked it up in our old records, you know, and it was like I said, suicide by hanging. Oh my god, that's like, creepy! Whoa. Man. <laughs> that's oh, creepy. Man. That, that's good shit. So it's not without a doubt in your mind. It's, I know we grew up Catholic, and we, you mm-hmm. know, we, we we believe in Jesus, and I, I get that. Yeah, 
But say just pretend for a minute that you didn't have that background. And you weren't mm. you were religious, you know. Mm. If you just had that experience just working in the cemetery, would you say without a doubt, I know there's something something's out there? Absolutely, because I always to me like uh my mom always said that mm. my job was a calling. Yeah. And I've always had like these intuitions that just yeah. came to me. You yeah. know, like kind of I can't explain it, but you felt it in your gut. People have that, that like this is not right or this yeah. is right. Yeah. You kind of go. But then working at that at the cemetery just confirmed a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like the your voice well, you just go listen to your voice sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna let you down, you know, it's just pretty much like, you know, okay. And you go with it, you know, and you trust in it. Yeah. You know? So let me ask you this. I mean, what you you deal with that. And you see it every day. Yeah. How that that's a very unique job, you know. Right, it's right. not like you're. I, I guess you know, police officers see a lot of stuff, yeah. bad stuff happen. Firefighters, yeah, cops, uh, mm-hmm. cops, you know, firefighters. Um, I see a lot of bad things on paper. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm for, I, fortunately, I don't have to go out and see the pick up the body parts in the street. I see right. photos. I see some bad stuff um, that I'll never unsee. But you deal with the family members right after these things happen. Yeah. You know, this is focused on this, the traumatic stuff. And I'm sure that's how to have, that's how to have a uh, change to you as far as how you see life. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm a, I'm a stress case and I'm always thinking, I'm always thinking about the future. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It could be a good thing. I know my mom, your wife, we're both the same. We're built the same <laughs> personality goes. You've always been the cool, you've always been chill. You've always never worried. You Most never, of the time, yeah. I, I was always getting <laughs> colds and sick, and yeah, my, yeah. we're always. I don't remember honestly. I don't remember you being sick that much growing up. Mm-hmm. And I really think it's because you don't worry too much, mm. like we do. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you do. Yeah. I don't know. What has this job? In what ways has it made you better? Who has it given you a perspective on life in general? And, mm-hmm. and what I want, what I'm getting to, is what, what can we share with the audience as far as what you see and what kind of wisdom can you, advice can you share about this life in general what you, in your job? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like I even told you, I think, you know, uh, yeah. you live your life to the fullest. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, um, you don't get a second chance in it. Life's short. Enjoy as much as you can. Take care of your body spiritually, mentally, and physically. You know, a fit body is a fit mind. I'm still working on that part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and even I remember this one guy, Naval, uh, I kind of watch his podcast and I love what he says. You know, uh, we all have two lives and the second one starts when you realize you only have one. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I live by that pretty much every day. You know, and just just get up with a passion, with a purpose. It, it's not going to be perfect every day. But for me, what works for me, you know, I just, you know, sometimes I say, you know, excuse my language, you know, fuck it. <laughs> what's gonna happen you know i was like hey i've gone this far in my life i'm gonna try to go out and enjoy all i can yeah to be honest with you you know what's the best that can happen you know, a man that go through the storm will never be the same coming out of the storm yeah so you get stronger when you go through friction in life you know uh fortunately uh yeah i didn't learn that till i got older you know but now that job taught me like you know what enjoy every moment you know go to that ball game eat that steak you know <laughs> go to those places you know i'm gonna have uh, another drink you know dance that. with That's a beautiful fair. woman i'm blessed with a beautiful <laughs> beautiful wife you know and you know and just enjoy life you know, hey, perfect <laughs> you know, that, the dance with a beautiful woman yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know hey you know uh, life short enjoy as much as you can you know and it's true you know it, it, i'm just thinking about a case and i'm not sharing names but i one of the cases i had um it's just so crazy because when the wrongful death case I have, you know, mm-hmm. a, a guy is just a young 24 year old kid mm. stalking case. And we, we discussed this already, you know, driving on the freeway yeah, and yeah. going to go pick up his son from his you know baby mother's house mm. and just makes a lane change. And it's, just, it's, it's raining out. Yeah. He has, his tires are a little bald because he was, he needed to change his tires and he loses control and he hits this, parked construction vehicle that shouldn't have been there and it's just random it's like yeah. why is this vehicle this vehicle shouldn't have been there at all and it was in the medium yeah and he just happens to slide right into that thing dies and it, it, that that case really changed me because it's like man this guy was just he wasn't you know wasn't a criminal was a was a good father yeah yeah and he just had to go pick up his son and, and, and you just never know man it's just like it's just right. so weird and and and, and, and freakish because if 
that truck wasn't there, he probably would have survived, yeah. you know, and, and these wrongful death cases that I have, it really teaches you. It's like, and this thing can, it can happen to anyone. And yeah. to just, you know, I never, when I see these cases, I look at my tires and my tires, how my tires in, in shape. And, and so it's true that the work we choose and the professions we choose, it really does change our perspective on different yeah. things, you know? And, and um, right. you know, it's not, that was not, that was an unexpected thing that yeah. happened to uh, the client. And I, I'm, you know, I'm real honored that I was chosen this family to represent him and give yeah. him a, a just result. Nothing will ever bring that that person back, but right. I was able to hold someone accountable for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's true. You know, our professions that we we choose it, it shapes our it can shape our the way we see the world yeah. and everything. Right, right. So yeah, so I'm I'm trying to what else we have here. Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm trying to think here. <laughs> you know, as far as your experience as an operations manager at a cemetery, how has it been as far as dealing with, what have you learned about yourself with, with managing other employees and managing people in that business? Have you, you've, you're on the front line as far as the families coming into seeing you, mm-hmm. um, you know, talking about they need someone to, that they need help burying someone, but your workers, the ones that are digging the holes, um, preparing the plots and everything like that, they're not really dealing with the families as much, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I, I, what's your experience as far as like, do you ever have to talk to them? Like, Hey guys, remember, like, take this job seriously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're dealing with someone. This is a barrier right here. We got it. We got to be on point. Right. Um, Sometimes they just forget what their their jobs that there's some human life behind this or human death right, behind this. Right, right. Um, how do you manage your employees as far as like tell, telling them about what we're about here? Like this is let's make this cemetery, let's make this burial meaningful for the family and, and to take your job more seriously. Have you have you had any kind of talks with your employees about that as far as you know how how to approach your jobs differently? Yeah, on, on my end, like I said, as I've gotten older, I've learned. Of my trials and errors mm-hmm. back to life yeah you know at first you're young you want to make sure you can think you can control everything yeah and you really can't uh as i got older and learned you know what i just have to give it up to them and trust in them and they're going to follow my lead mm-hmm. but i'm also going to follow their lead as well yeah and anytime you're and i tell them even when we hire people i say hey, uh this job is much different you're not going to get rich here but it's so rewarding when you know you gave your all to that family. They might not see it in the beginning, but in the end, they'll, you know, they might say, hey, you know what? That was a beautiful service we had. Yeah. And you always want to have the your first impressions, your your first impression should be your best impression. You know, at least most of the time. Yeah. And your last impression should be everlasting. Yeah. So that's what I learned. I tell the guys, you know, uh, pretend like your mom's buried here. Yeah. You know, take take your little, and it's training. You know, you got to yeah. get to know. Mostly men I deal with, so yeah. you got to say, you know what, uh, be a little bit more, uh, house, more house cleaning kind of skills. Yeah. yeah. You know, kind of be details. Know how to finish. Yeah. I think what I learned a lot is knowing how to finish. You start something, know how to finish it. Like you want to make sure, like I tell the guys, be like a ninja. You show up, get it done. You're not seen, but you'll be appreciated when you go home. When you do a great job, for me, mm-hmm. I'm just saying for me, when you do a great job. Your life's so much better when you go home. Hey, I did my best. Yeah. That's all I could do. I didn't make it perfect. They might have not liked me, but at least deep down, I know I, I did my best. Yeah. And you can live with that and you wake up for another day. Interesting. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's awesome. So what about, say you got a new wrongful death lawyer out there mm-hmm. and he gets referred to case. Um, um, someone's passed away. What advice would you give that, that, law, that lawyer as far as dealing with that family? Yeah, like I said, uh, you know what? Uh, get to know the family. That's number one. Yeah, you know, know the facts. Get to know the family. Don't get caught up on you know numbers and what else happened. How just get to know the facts and get to know the family because pretty much it's it's a people business. Mm-hmm. And if you're not in into people to help them to be the best, while you're not at your best, then you yeah. might want to find another career. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this: because this is something that I've mm-hmm. I've struggled with in my career too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like the reality is that as a personal injury lawyer, our livings are obviously we we get we're very passionate about getting justice for people, and yeah. we we were blessed the career where we 
profit um, and hold people accountable at the same time. We take care of people, our clients and yeah. get them compensation for their wrongs, for their whatever whoever's wronged them, and then mm-hmm. we also get paid. Yeah. Most lawyers, personal injury lawyers, when they have a wrongful death case and there's a big a policy, you know, we can't help but like we get excited. This just sounds it sounds distasteful, but yeah, it's like man, no, here, this is it. This is life changing. This could be a big case for us. Um. And I've always been very, man, I don't want to blow them up. Like call them up on the phone. Hey, do, 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 there's some pass away. I need to sign this case up. I don't, yeah. I'm not, that's not who I am. It's not who I was raised to be. Right, right. Um, that being said, there's, it's a very competitive business. And if you don't do it, someone else will. Right. Now, what's your perspective on the signups as far as like getting this case? Like say this is a big, you know, it's a big case. It, it's going to get, um, you know, it's going to be, it's a commercial policy, wrongful death case. That's what personal yeah. injury lawyers, they, those are the cases they, they want. Yeah. Um, but the accident happened hypothetically three days ago. And I just found out someone referred me the case today and I just, I have to call the family up. What would your, what's your perspective on calling that family? Would it be, would you suggest calling them right away? Call it, giving them some time. How would your approach be with that? Or what would you say? I mean, with your experience, how would you handle that? That's a tough question. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> but, a tough I mean, it's question. definitely what you, you know, what, what, if you had any insight in that, what would you think? Knowing that there's going to be the hundred other lawyers that want that case, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, the families I dealt with that, you know, you kind of have a feeling like if they're lost, yeah, if they don't know, they probably never had to deal with the lawyer before. You know, they, they uh, and I kind of like some of the families that dealt with say, hey, if when I always tell them pretty much my pretty much my word was whenever you're t- ready, you know, because you're thinking headstone, you're thinking uh, a church service, you're thinking graveside service, you're thinking you, you just you think of memories, you know, you're numb, pretty much numb most of the time. Yeah. You know, is, is this happening to me? Is this, this is shocking? This is the first time I wrote. Like, why me? Why all of a sudden? Or how about the kids if they had kids? You know, I was like, what's going to be taking care of them? <clears throat> and sometimes when I have families, you know, I say, you know, it, when you're ready and you feel that you need some uh, legal counsel, because it looked like you might, mm-hmm. uh, I might say, hey, call this person because yeah. I trust in them. And I'm putting all my, all my, you know, because they're going to, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm in the cemetery mm-hmm. office. They know where to find me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so. They know where to find me, and it's like, hey, Ruben sent me a bad dude or bad, bad place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I have to make sure I trust in that person that's going to give them the hundred uh, percent for justice, pretty much. That's the same way I feel too. Yeah. Is when I refer cases to other people, I'm vouching for this guy. Yeah. And if you're not answering the phone, and if you're this guy's just a mm. going to dis dis hurt the client, I don't want to. That's my name, so I'm very <laughs> right. careful. I'm the right. same way. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, you have to be really it, when you're all in. Like you put all the chips on the table. When you're all in, you're all in. Yeah, you got to make sure you get it from from because it just like with the cemetery, it never goes away. I sell them a plot. They would see the loved one being buried. The casket's lowered. Yeah. There's covered. There's uh, flowers, and then maybe a couple of days later, you know, where are they? Then the headstones are installed. It never goes away. There's always a place, and I'm always there. Yeah. So, and I always say, I'm here till I'm not here. Yeah, and and I'm gonna read, and that's me. Just it's all customer customer service. service. And customer I say, service. even call me on a Sunday. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, you know. But I say, as long as you're not abusive me. with it, I'm the same way. Like if as right. long as you're here's myself. Just don't don't be crazy. Yeah, don't be needy. <laughs> don't don't be needy. You know, don't don't be needy. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm here for you because I'm here about solutions. Yeah, and I think families like that. For me, I'm all about solutions because I feel better and. It, it's a challenge, but it's a good challenge because I'm, you know, I'm kind of built for it. This is my calling, and hey, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, so yeah, I'm just giving it to you 100. Yeah, yeah. So you 25 years in the 25 years, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. That's wild. So yeah. another question. I know we're almost done here. Yeah. What do you, you, you know, you? I'm just talking in general now. With your business experiences, your business, your experiences of being a. Uh, in the community, you've been a juror a few times. And yeah, I'm always like, juror, you're man. always getting called for jury duty, man. Like, I know. I always like, <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? What do you think the qualities of our good lawyer are? Like, and you, because you've been in, you watched some trials, you've talked to lawyers in, the, in your business. You, I know you talked about some lawsuits with 
mm-hmm. negligent burying that didn't have to do with you, but yeah, you right, were involved. Right. You know? Yeah, we were involved. Yeah, we didn't do anything wrong. Right? <laughs> but and you've been in, you've been in the subpoena as a witness or yeah. the wrong the different people messed up at a burial, the funeral homes messed up, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it you see that? What is it? What do you think a, a, a jury's think a good lawyer is, and what what do you think they're looking for when in in, in, in an attorney? Yeah, like for me, yeah. like when I was in those deliberation rooms and. Um, it's kind of different, you know, uh, for me, I'm just thinking, I mean, women kind of look for, um, confidence. No. Give me the facts, no. bring me into it. I want to, I want to feel you kind of like mm-hmm. bring me into that case. I want to see your heartbeat. Yeah. And for men, this is just my opinion, men, when I was there, if this guy's or he or she's prepared yeah, and don't waste my time, you know, I got other things to do. I'm always looking at my clock. You know, preparation is key. If yeah. he's sloppy, I'm looking for it. Yeah. yeah, he or she's, you know, just drawing. I guess to the facts. I know, you know, I'm, I'm still working. I only get much yeah. being a juror. Yeah. Just give me the facts and don't insult my intelli- intelligence. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's me. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And you've seen different. You've seen good lawyers. And you've seen bad lawyers out there. Right. A bit. Right. What do you think the bad? Like, if you, what would you say a bad lawyer was? Um, uh, uh, your, your boring. Experience? Looking at his nose and just. You know, kind of, you can feel him like he's, it's kind of like he's forcing you to kiss him, you know, but you're not going to sleep with him. You know, yeah, kind of yeah. like, kind of like that, you know, <laughs> hey, I want to be all in love with you. And once you yeah. win the crowd, yeah, you pretty much 90% have won the case. That's awesome. That's win awesome. the crowd, like I said. So you've heard opening statements. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. do you think that the case is decided in the opening or, well, not decided, but you're kind of leaning one way and your experience ready or what do you? What I've learned is give me a grabber. Give yeah. me some quote or some statement. That's for me though. Yeah. That's gonna live with me when I go home and think about yeah. the case. Yeah. Because you're not you're told not to talk about it, but I want to think about it when I'm in my car, or even you know, or walking in. Hey, he or she was that was solid. Yeah. I I I can feel him on that. Yeah. He, he got me. He you know. Oh, that's awesome. You complete me kind of thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Cool. <laughs> Those cool. are good. Yeah. Cool, man. Well. You know, man, I, I just got to thank you, Dad. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm trying to keep professional, but the reality, like I said, I'm a, res- I'm a resourceful. That's yeah. one of the gifts. I, I'm like, you know, they told me, hey, we're doing, we need to do this podcast. We got to do, mm-hmm. um, we're gonna talk about wrongful death. Yeah. And I, I, the way I have my team here is like, just tell me, just set it up for me, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. get it. And I was like, man, I don't want to bring on these other attorneys. This is gonna be the same shit. Every attorney out there is talking about, oh, I got this settlement, I got this settlement. Yeah. All the podcasts are. The same lawyers, same, yeah. you know, the old white guys talking about how great they are. Let's just, let's just, <laughs> yeah. just talk the reality of it. And I was like, you know what? We're going to change the game. We're going to bring on my dad yeah. who's dealt with more death than any of these people have. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. Um, I want to thank you for coming yeah. on. It, it's, it's, I mean, just the knowledge you've given has yeah. been gold. It's been gold. Hey, it's an honor. It's an yeah, honor. yeah. And I, I appreciate you. Um. And we'll we'll get some more talks going, but I just want to say thank you for coming on, and yep. I, I hope our audience has got some value from this. This is some mm-hmm. real good shit. It is. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so it is, yeah. thank you so much for coming on, and uh, yeah, I look welcome. forward to having you on the next one. Yeah, yeah, love Cheers, you, man. love you too. Thank you for listening to this episode of Beyond the Bar. If you enjoyed this episode, please share and subscribe to the podcast for more podcast episodes please visit sepulvitalawgroup.com slash podcast.